as the head baseball coach of you know Kent State, the Golden Flashes, we are so happy and excited for the three guys that got drafted um, out of here at Kent State this year. You know, not only did we have an unbelievable season uh, record-wise, but it was also great to see that three of our players got rewards. Rewards were uh, to the Major League Baseball draft, and it's something they've been dreaming about their whole life. As a kid, you know, as a baseball player, most of these kids in our locker room, they dream about becoming a Major League Baseball player, and, and these three guys now have an opportunity to do that. And it's a, great, um, it's a great thing for our baseball program. It's a great thing for uh, the players in our locker room because it gives them something to work for. We've had a great tradition here of developing players and getting into professional baseball. We've had over 120 guys get drafted in Major League Baseball, and it's just a, a, um, a, a great feat by this baseball program to get three more done today or this year, um, starting with Eric Lauer uh, in the first round, 25th pick overall by the San Diego Padres. You know, um, just an unbelievable, unbelievable uh, career he has had in a year, National Player of the Year. He deserves everything he got um, in, to, to get drafted in that first round. There, there's, only, uh, there's only just a, a select few kids in this world that have the opportunity to get drafted in the first round, and he's one of them, and what an honor that is for him. He's gonna pitch in the big leagues, and he may pitch in the big leagues very, very soon. Um, he's, I heard ESPN talk about he, him not having the highest ceiling, but he has the highest basement and that's way more important than anything and I think that tells you that he's got the highest foundation I think he's going to be a starter in the big leagues I really do and a lot of it has to do I think with his easy delivery that he has the repeatable delivery that he has and the four pitch mix for a strike that he has already and the command and that's what big leaguers do and a big league starter has those those three things and he has them already um, you know, you, you pray that he stays healthy, just like uh, all three of these guys and all, all those guys in the clubhouse. And that's going to be a big thing going forward for, for Eric Lauer is just staying healthy and staying on track. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I do believe that it'll be very soon when we see him in a big league uniform. Um, and then you got Andy Ravel. Andy Ravel, uh, seventh round pick to Toronto Blue Jays, um, uh, our Saturday starter, and another guy who's had a great career. Um, he, he started off a little bit slow in, in the beginning of our season, and it's just a testament to him to work back to where he was at the end of our season. At the end of our season this year, he was dominating. And um, I'm just really proud of him because he's worked so hard to get to where he's at. Um, and I think that's a guy with a very, very high ceiling that he hasn't even scratched yet. So it'll be interesting to see Andy Ravel five years from now, to be honest. Um, right now, I think he only weighs about 165 pounds. He's six foot three, 165 pounds, and I, I just can't wait to see what he's going to look like in three or four years. Um, with the easiness of his arm, his arm's so explosive. It's actually a lot of fun to watch him pitch because he is, he makes things look so easy. Um, I'm, I, I think Andy Ravel can pitch in the big leagues, and and uh, I just can't wait to see um, a guy who's got a high ceiling. A guy who's going to continue to get stronger. I think that's going to be one of the biggest things for him. And uh, we'll see him in a Toronto Blue Jays uniform one day. Connor Simonetti, a guy, <laughs> unbelievable uh, power. And scouts look for one tool, if not many tools, right? They go by power, speed, hitting, arm strength, um, and all that. But uh, he's got power. And it's uh, bona fide power. He had 17 home runs for us. And one thing that I've always said about Connor Simonetti is his ball, when he hits a baseball, his ball carries more than anybody I've seen in a long time. His ball just keeps going and going and going. And I think he displayed that against Toledo, I think in game two of, of uh, the Mac tournament this year, he hit a ball opposite field in the, at the tournament and nobody thought I was gonna leave, but the ball just keeps carrying and carrying. He's hit a lot of balls like that. And he's also hit a ton of no doubters as well as um, as anybody. He's got power to all fields and uh, another guy that's got uh, I think he's got the potential to be a 20 plus home run guy uh, not only in the minor leagues but 
gets to the big leagues, he's going to be a huge power threat. And that's that's one tool that Connor Simony has, another guy who's worked extremely hard. And you've seen him progress. All three of these guys have progressed um, in the three years they've been here um, and gotten a lot better. And it's just a testament to them. Um, it's a testament to this program, to a testament to my coaching staff. And I'm just so proud of these guys, um, these three guys, I'm, as, a, as I'm proud of everybody in that clubhouse because we do work extremely hard. But to see those guys um, get the reward and the opportunity to play in the big leagues is, is something special. What lies ahead of them, um, you know, they've got a road, a, a long road. It's not an easy road to get to the big leagues. And, um, you know, it's changed quite a bit since I've been in, in – you know, in at that level, I got drafted after my junior year in the seventh round, same, same as Andy Ravel actually, and um, it was a lot different. I found out through a phone call, and uh, now everything's out. It's on TV, all that, and that was, I guess, it was about 20 years ago now. So I'm getting old, but uh, it's uh, it's unbelievable feat for these guys. But the, they've got a long road ahead of them. Okay, and. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll all probably start out in single A ball, and they, they, we call them the bus leagues. They'll be on the buses, and um, they'll have to be self-motivated. Uh, they have to make sure they're taking care of their bodies because they play every single day now, um, and they'll be traveling every single day. They're on a bus. They go five hours. They play. Um, they play at 7 o'clock at night, and then sometimes they got to play a game, a day game where you got to get up early. So it's just uh, they, they, it's going to be important for them to stay really focused, um, do the right things off the field, and uh, make sure they keep their goals in mind. That's, that's the biggest thing that they need to do. And if they can do that and stay healthy, they all three of them have a chance to play in the big leagues quick here, in my opinion. Now comparing as far as, you know, like I said, the draft goes and then, you know, even pro ball, um, Pro ball has changed quite a bit. When I played, there was a little bit tougher stadiums to play. And now you look at these minor league stadiums that are huge, they're beautiful. Um, so that's it's it's a lot better now in pro ball and what they're doing. There's more, I think, more money to be made. There's more money to be made in the draft. They're going to have an easier way about it, but it's not. It's still not easy. It's not an easy feat. There's going to be a lot of really good players. They're going to be. They're going to be challenged, and it's going to be um, the biggest thing is they need to stay focused, and, and they're going to have to be self-accountable now. It's not so much where you have coaching structure. You've got to make sure that it's a business, and you're, you're a number and an individual, and your job is to get to the big leagues.